Thank you, Ms. Janet, for allowing us to interview you today. So I'll just ask you the first question. In your opinion, what is the greatest challenge of implementing UNSCR 1325 in the Asia Pacific region? Well, I think that uh, one of the greatest challenges uh, in implementing uh, 1325 is really uh, to uh, create awareness and understanding about the importance of this uh, Security Council resolution. Um, I think women's issue, you know, uh, partly because, you know, in our society, which tends to be very pat patriarchal, so uh, the norm is that, you know, the woman's role is not recognized. And here with 1325, we're trying to change that thinking a bit. So first of all, there needs to be awareness, and then there needs to be understanding. You know, it's not just being aware that the rest of the world think that this is important. The rest of the world think that women who are caught in conflict situation have, uh, first of all, to face particular vulnerabilities, uh, say more so than, uh, than men, and also that there are capacities that women have to contribute to peace building and peacemaking. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me go to the next question. How important are women to peace protectors in your opinion? Very important. And that's what also 1325 is all about. Mm -hmm. You know, as I was saying just now, that uh, there are certain capacities and, um, shall I say, natural advantage that women has which are not being recognized. And uh, these, what I would say, natural advantage comes basically also from their role. I mean, as uh, women, you know, they're mothers, they're sisters, you know, they're closer to the family, there's a nurturing role. You know, when conflict strikes, it's not only that they are having problems worrying about themselves, they often have to worry about <coughs> the rest of the families. Uh, and so women tend to be much more engaged uh, and they understand, you know, what is needed to hold the family together, that there is the important thing of making sure that the families have food, have resources, have protection and all that. The men are less engaged, I think, with those kind of, of, of issues. So because of this natural role, I would say, they have a better understanding of what is needed to make peace. And um, I think, for example, and in my own personal experience in projects with women, I find that they're particularly very good with, uh, you know, uh, activities that can uh, uh, lead to peaceful uh, coexistence. You know, part of the problem in conflict situation is that very often you're caught up in situation which creates divisions between groups. Take, for example, if you are, you know, refugees or if you are victims of natural disaster, you often have to flee to places where there are other uh, groups and, you know, what we would call the host community. You move to areas which doesn't belong to you but belongs to somebody else, but you need to, to, to survive there. And, of course, this brings about tension between what I would call the host community and, you know, the displaced people. But women often have the ability you know, to talk to other women. And as a result, you know, they can create much better understanding. I think women are also particularly good with building trust. You know, partly because I think they're less threatening. Uh, and because they're less threatening, it's easier for them to play this role of uh, uh, bridging across uh, divide and also, you know, uh, connecting people together.